Hey guys, before we start this video, let me tell you that this is another TFL misadventure. I came out here to Moab to check out those uh, new 37s that we put on the uh, Hummer and well, things did not go according to plan. So uh, yeah, yeah, once again, we've got a Hummer with some issues. So sit back, enjoy and watch me get very stressed out as I try to prove that going from 35s to 37s fixes the problems with the Hummer. Hint, it does not. But a little bit more slippage. Um, brakes are working, suspension's working. And that's the thing, when you, take, when you take the suspension, one pedal drive unavailable and four pedal drive unavailable. Schedule service by going over that uh, little uh, uh, hump. This is where 9,000 pounds is gonna become a real liability. I don't want to put it into the tree. So far I've got grip and uh, that's as far as she'll go. Come on, both tires are oh, they're smoking. Let me show you. Guys, welcome to my favorite place in the world. You know where that is, Moab. And you're wondering, are we gonna go the easy way or the hard way? And of course we're gonna go the hard way because I'm here with this the brand new Hummer EV, and I brought it back here for one specific reason, and that is to see if we can fix the problem that we've had with this truck ever since we bought it. And then, of course, is ground clearance. So, let's talk about what we've done to make it better and hopefully make it much more off-road capable. Now, we took it here about a month ago, and just like on Red Cone, the one issue we had was not enough ground clearance, and that was because the air suspension, basically after 15 minutes on the trail, we kind of give up the ghost and lower the vehicle, even though we were trying to raise it. Because the battery tray is pretty smooth. Yeah, and you have skid plates everywhere. Watch out, it's lowering itself for some reason. Oh God. I know. <laughs> um, but also there's a camera up here. So in the middle. Yeah, that's where the camera is. It keeps lowering itself. Oh, it's gonna squish me. <laughs> Come on over. Oh. Squish you. <laughs> we're about to go to a frame bender, which, uh, tests basically break over angle so you want the vehicle in its highest ride height and every time i try to put it in extended ride height let me show you right there so right now i'm in normal there i'm trying to put it into that height let's see what happens it says leveling system unavailable and we had the same thing happen to us at red cone so since you don't have the maximum height available right now i'm gonna take you driver's side off the ledge and passenger side not off the ledge So we took a very old school approach and that is we swapped out wheels and tires. Now, these are kind of the gold standard, at least I think so. These are BFG Mud Terrains KM3s. And I was able to drive here, let me show you the LaSalle Mountains over here, in between snowstorms. All the rain coming in from California is making this a precarious journey because you can get stuck on I-70 in the snow. So I'm here for just a brief time to see if an old school approach, and that is up tiring or going bigger, makes the Hummer EV much better off-road. Now, the tread pattern on these tires is really good. Look at that. I mean, you know, if you want grip, that is an incredible amounts of grip. Now it has not improved the energy use on the highway and I did a video actually showing how much worse our energy use became driving on the highway but because it's got such a large battery about 250 kilowatt hours it is doable. Now in this video I'm here by myself so we're going to go down the trail and we're going to see if these new tires have really improved this vehicle's off-road capability. Because like I said, when we took it up red cone, especially at the gatekeeper, we got stuck because we got high centered. Come on, Homer. On the battery, that's the battery. Nine thousand pounds of Hummer are on a rock right now. Now I have not aired down, and I've specifically not done so because I want a harsh ride. No, I'm kidding. I have not done so uh, because I want as much ground clearance as possible. As you can tell, uh, the suspension is not in its highest height, but it is in the 
extended off-road height. And if you guys want to come here and experience this beauty, I would highly recommend you get Onyx Off-Road. They're a partner of ours. You can download a map uh, to your phone. So even if you're out of cell service, you can still find fins and things, which is where I'm at. So Onyx Off-Road makes, well, off-roading more fun because you don't get lost. Anyway, I think it's time that we hit the trail and keep in mind I am here by myself. Oh, one other thing I want to show you. Last time we were here on Butt Scratcher, we actually hit on one of these recovery hooks. Was it this one? Uh, maybe it was this guy. Uh, now I can't find it. Or maybe we swapped it out already. Uh, no, it was right there. We hit right there and we didn't swap it out specifically because the kind gentleman, I believe his name was Josh, who actually manufactured these, sent these uh, out to us to swap out for the one that we damaged. So thank you very much. I didn't want to swap it out because I was wondering if we'd hit it again uh, and I didn't want to scratch up a new one. You're very close to touching. Go driver. Yes, keep going. <laughs> hey, Roman. Yeah. You know all you touched? What? Was that D-ring. Really? All right, so let's talk about the Hummer EV uh, from the inside. Like I said, I have uh, put this in off-road mode already. Uh, and one of the cool features of this is cameras. Now check this out. You have all sorts of different cameras you can use and you need them because the view is not grand. I mean, it's, you know, a very tall vehicle with a flat roof and uh, GMC has thought of that by giving you look at this an underneath camera both facing forward and backward which is pretty cool and then uh, there is an off-road mode uh, which gives you all kinds of things including the, the cameras uh, let's see what that guy does air down mode yeah so if you were to air down you could set the temperature I mean, the uh, pressure, not the temperature, you could set the pressure and then it would honk the horn when you get to that pressure. Uh, uh, and then of course your auxiliary switches. Uh, and this one gives you all the pitch and roll um, and of course all your auxiliary lights. And we have these little corner auxiliary lights that we've hooked up, uh, but uh, I'm not sure those are gonna be critical today because it is the morning. Now it is a little chilly out there uh, and I do have heated steering wheel, which I will turn on. I have not locked my disc because I don't think I'll need it, but uh, let's mosey on down the trail. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna go back to my cameras. I wanna see what, what I can see. I think I'm gonna go with uh, the basic view, forward and bird's eye. So the question is, has going to a 37 from a 35 and a more, let's face it, the KM3, which is a mud terrain tire, is a much more dedicated off-road tire. Now we're going the harder option, which is going to take us right to frame bender. And if you have been following our videos, you'll know uh, that frame bender uh, is kind of a steep drop with a shelf in the middle. And if you uh, see, this is this is a problem. This is all I'm seeing right now. Luckily, right there, I can see where I'm going. You do kind of lose the perspective in terms of depth, but uh, at least you can see that, that you're not gonna go flying over a cliff and you can watch for those arrows to, to let you know uh, that you're still going the right way. So let me see here. So this, this is kind of the first uh, a little tricky bit and this is where we're gonna test approach, departure and breakover angle right away. So I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna put this camera out there so you can see it from the outside view. And you can see just how much we have improved or not our approach departure and breakover angle. And we're going to take it the hard way here. I'm not going to go the easy way because I want to test the easy way would be to go this this way. The hard way would be go hard ways to go right through all the crud, all the steps and all the rocks. So we're going to go the hard way. Here we go. 39 degrees out there. In case you're wondering, we go back to my cameras so I can see what I'm about to run over. And here we go. Whoa. It's a little, uh, the throttle's a little abrupt. I'd like a little bit more gentle throttle mapping. Uh, this truck does have over a thousand horsepower, which is a lot, and tons of torque. 
but in off-road mode I like to see a little bit of a softer throttle oh a little slippage there but a little bit more slippage um, brakes are working suspension is working and that's the thing when you take when you take the suspension one pedal drive unavailable wonder why that is oh probably because I'm in off-road mode Four-wheel drive unavailable. Schedule service. It just died. Reduce acceleration. Drive with care. I have no pedal right now. I'm in low mode. Pause. Okay, put in P. Let me show you. It just said four-wheel drive unavailable. Schedule service. By going over that uh, little uh, uh, hump. And I'm pressing the accelerator and nothing is happening. Hmm. <sighs> Dismiss. Okay. Reduce acceleration, drive with care. Wow. That was unexpected. How about in low? No, nothing. All right, I got no uh, drive. Let me go get the other camera. So I'm kind of stuck. Ay, ay, ay. <sighs> now, last time I got stuck, it was on the highway, actually on the road, trying to make a left-hand turn. And when this happened, I shut the truck down and it wouldn't come back until I pulled uh, the battery. Hey guys, I'm very unhappy. I'm in a brand new Hummer in traffic and the truck has taken a complete dump and it will not go into gear and it won't go out of gear. Uh, and I've tried a restart. Uh, so now it is in safe mode. That has done nothing. This is where the truck left me stranded. Very dangerous location. Under there? Yeah. Let's, let's pull the battery. Okay, there we go. All right. It says shifter is locked. Okay. Open and close right rear window. It said press brake for 20 seconds. 11, 10, 9. These are 8. Shifter Shift unlocked. Neutral. No <laughs> I think if you just keep it in drive, don't don't put it out of drive, okay? We'll drive it to the dealer. So I actually brought a battery tool with me if I have to do that again. But right now, I'm in drive. Reduced acceleration. As you can tell, I've got nothing. So, let's do something. Let's try something. Let's power it down. This is kind of dangerous. Open the door. So it shuts down 82% of the battery. Close the door. Yeah. Keys in the car. Let's power it back up. It still says reduced acceleration drive with care. Four-wheel drive not available, and I've got this little red light right there. And I put it in drive. Hey, and I've got drive. <laughs> oh God! Thank God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but no four-wheel drive apparently. Um, <laughs> or at least I've got, I've got, I've got, yeah, I've got some issues here. <laughs> But I'm not stuck. I'm not dead in the water. Uh, and um, ah, what am I going to say here? Let me see if it'll let me go into off road mode, and give me extended height. So uh, I go up again. Let's see, normal. Let's go extended height. Once again, this way, a mechanical approach, it's going up. So that's good. The suspension is going up. And I do have. Uh, I do have bigger tires, so that kind of sorts out the problem with the tires. Uh, kind of sorry, I'm kind of just wondering what the heck is going on, so I'm a little flabbergasted here. Uh, oh, it's working hard now because it's only in two-wheel drive, so I'm going to have to get out of fins and things in two-wheel drive. And maybe the best thing I could have done is actually gone with uh, these bigger tires because let's face it with bigger tires 
uh, I get more grip and maybe I will be airing down because I got to make it up one tree hill and making it up one tree hill in two wheel drive can be a little uh, tricky. So we're about to find that out as well. All right, well, uh, I'm gonna set up the camera here again and we can try, um, we can try to see how, how this better ground clearance and taller tires do on uh, frame bender here. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. But I think I'm only in two wheel drive. I just don't know what to say. I could pull the battery, uh, but I'm afraid of doing that right here on the, uh, on the course. Cause uh, you know, what if it doesn't come back to life? Then I'm gonna have to get a wrecker here and that's not gonna be fun. So I'm just gonna try to make it the rest of the way in two wheel drive. And then once I get on the main road, I can always pull uh, the battery over you by the batteries. I can pull the terminals on the 12 volt to reset the system and see if that fixes it. Uh, sometimes that does fix it. But let's take a look over here. So this is frame bender. And uh, you, can, you can see how well this uh, does with the new increased ride height. It should be fine. I'm going downhill. My biggest worry is, of course, one tree hill. Well, we'll try. It's probably the only part where I have to go uphill. Nine and a half thousand pounds going uphill in a big vehicle like this. Can be a little tricky. Going downhills, not so tricky. Big shelf, kind of looking forward. Come on, come on Hummer, you can do this. Here comes the shelf. And went over that, didn't hit. Bigger tires helped a lot. And uh, let's see. Ooh, I think I did hit a little bit there. Um, and we'll check it out when I get to the bottom here, see if I actually did hit. On the trail, you might think to yourself, losing four wheel drive is not such a good thing, but these things happen when you're off roading. <laughs> Let's not make this into, you know, the end of the world. Uh, it just happens. Uh, and that's part of off-roading. I've actually been out here in Moab where I've seen people not just lose two-wheel, four-wheel drive, but lose entire wheels. I mean, I've seen, you know, diffs explode. I've seen uh, half shafts break. I was following a Jeep where the rear tires, I was following them, just kind of slowly maneuvered, meandered its way off the back with the wheel and use on three wheels. So there are worse things out here. Um, and uh, I think I can make it. Hey guys, if you're interested in knowing what it's like to road trip an electric truck, be sure to check out TFL Talk, our podcast where Nathan and I will take a deep dive on everything that happened to me on this trip. And that podcast is available on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Apple. I may have hit on here. Let's see. Yep, yeah, that's fresh. So that's where we hit. Now we know. I suppose I could bend those up so it doesn't happen again. Give it as much, most departure angle as possible. But yeah, you know, they rushed this truck into production in some ways. And I think what they did was didn't quite, quite test everything. I mean, it's a whole new world. It's all electric and yeah, things break. And that's what we buy these things for, you know, to figure out exactly, you know, what is good and what is bad. And uh, right now we're, we're kind of figuring out what's bad. So here's One Tree Hill. And as you can tell, it gets kind of steep and deep. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop before it because I'm probably going to need a little bit of momentum to get up this thing if I can get up it at all, which I don't know if I can. So we got, I've got good tires, but the problem is, let me close the door. The problem is you can't tell steepness, but that right there, it gets very steep. And if I can get up and over that, uh, then I think I'm home free uh, because the rest of it is kind of downhill. Yeah, hopefully I can make it up this. Here we go. This is where 9,000 pounds is going to become a real liability. I don't want to put it into the tree. So far I've got grip. 
and uh, that's as far as she'll go. Come on, both tires are oh, they're smoking. Let me show you. Yeah. yeah. Burning rubber there, literally. I gotta back up, sliding backwards. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. You can really feel it. Hmm. Yeah, I burned a lot of rubber. I got one more thing I can try, which is locking the rear diff. So let's see if it rocks. It's blinking. So it should be locked. So that means hopefully both tires are now helping to push this truck up the hill. I'm gonna go a little bit of momentum here. Nope. Nope, it's not gonna do it. I gotta slide back down. Well, there we have a problem. Hmm. I wonder if I could go up this way. So take it up here. Uh, maybe come up and over this way. It doesn't seem to be as steep. Let's give that a shot. I just want to get home. I don't want to wreck this thing. I need to be able to get home. So in two wheel drive, I can make it home. But let's try it the other way now. Hi, yay, yay. I think four wheel steering may have also taken a dump. Um, yeah, it feels like four wheel steering also is not working. I'm not really turning very much. Kind of back to old school four wheel in here. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see if I can make it up this way. I love the fact that I have these tires. Yeah, it's doing it. It's doing it. <laughs> it's doing it. I'm going to stay in the throttle. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh my God, I made it up the hill. <laughs> Oh, I am so happy. I'm not stopping, guys. I do not want to lose momentum. <laughs> oh my God. I made it up one tree hill the easy way. Uh, thank God for those giant, enormous 37 mud terrains and the grip they provide. <sighs> that was a little, uh, that was a little butt clenchy. All right, well, let's go down uh, Ass Scratcher here. Well, this is, this is kind of just a very steep downhill. Once again, cameras, give me some cameras so I can see where I'm going. There we go. It's very steep here. And, um, but it's doing it. And it's getting a little bit, probably airing down would have been a good idea initially. But then again, you lose uh, height. But the air suspension this time didn't give out, uh, but the four wheel drive system gave out. And I believe, I don't know, can you tell? Show you, I believe the four wheel steering also gave out. I can't tell, but it doesn't look like it's four wheel steering. Ain't that a corker guys, huh? I came out here to try to fix something that uh, we thought is very fixable, which is the, of course, ride height by going to a bigger tire. And in fact, not only did we fix the ride height, but it looks like it may have saved me uh, from, from actually getting stuck on the trail because bigger tires, more grip, uh, made it much more possible for this truck to get through here in two wheel drive. Uh, there's one more part that's coming up, which is ass scratcher. And that's the part where hopefully these taller tires should help. Oh gee, it's very steep. Hard, hard to explain how steep it is here. Look at that, I'm about grippy shoes. As I say that, I'm about to go flying into a bush and a prickly one at that. All right, so obviously ass scratcher, all this is always cars hitting. So let me see if you can see if it'll actually hit or not. I don't think it will. Come on, don't scratch. Go back to my cameras, front camera, slowly going over. Let's see if it slides. I'm trying to control this. That's 
not sliding. Now it's sliding. I've actually seen people, ooh, I got my butt vibrator because it was such a steep approaching. I've actually seen people bust half shafts here. No hitting. So I think from a 37 point of view, that's a winner winner. Chicken dinner. See, nothing got damaged. <laughs> 30 minutes of, of, of butt clenchiness there. Uh, and that's, you know, what I also love about off-roading, right? Uh, you can go from <laughs> enjoying the day to not. Driving along, everything's good, you got this video plan in your head, and then uh, something happens, and then all of a sudden, life becomes interesting. And that's a good thing. I feel like you're living, you know? And look, here in the soft stuff, it's beautiful. I mean, gosh, look at that. It's as soft as shaving cream through this soft snow. And the instant torque is wonderful. And the four-wheel steering, if I had it, is a game changer. <laughs> but, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm having fun now. Look at this. <laughs> like in my old motorcycle days, this is the best part of fins and things right through here. You can really, you can really uh, let it rip. All right, let me park it and, um, uh, and kind of come to a conclusion here. Maybe what we have here uh, is, uh, the ult is the ultimate, yeah, I know the keys in my pocket, is the ultimate off-road on-roader. <laughs> and I'm trying not to use the P word because I'm sure that's going to be in the comments. But uh, hopefully I can get it back home. If you want to see what uh, the bigger tires did for fuel economy, head on over to all TFL where we've posted that video. Uh, and uh, do I still love it? Yes, I still love it. You know, my friend, when I was growing up, Fred, nice to see you, Fred, had a GT6. And I remember I loved that vehicle. I don't think I can fit in it now because it always broke down. And, uh, you know, we're living in such a reliable world now that you forget that like these, I'm going to call them operatic relationships that you have with people or cars can be very engaging. And that's my relationship with this vehicle now. It's very operatic. Uh, and uh, take it to the dealer, have them sort it out. Maybe I'll pull the uh, battery once I get it back on the trail. Uh, and uh, yeah. All right, I made it off the trail and I've been doing a little bit of thinking about uh, what's going on with this truck. So um, a little bit of background on it. Um, as you know, I got stuck before in this where it just wouldn't go into drive. Uh, and then I had to pull the battery uh, terminal, but we couldn't pull the battery terminal because it wouldn't open the front because everything was dead in the truck. So what happened here is I've got two lights. I've got the four wheel steering light, uh, which says it's dead. And I've got a trouble light, which I suppose means it doesn't have all wheel drive. Now, all wheel drive simply means that the front wheel drives aren't work, front wheels aren't working. So this has a um, three motor setup. Um, there are two motors in the rear and one in the front uh, and the lockers are virtual in the back and mechanical in the front. I never even used a front mechanical locker. So I suspect this is more of a software or technological glitch than mechanical glitch. I just think that the motor in the front isn't powering the wheels. That's all that's happening right now. Uh, and so maybe um, you know, a hard reboot by going in and pulling the um, terminal will solve that. So what I'm going to do is, I haven't had breakfast yet, I want to get out of here early before the snow hits, because that's my biggest worry. i got to go back through a snowstorm potentially. And at that point, um, you do want <laughs> all-wheel drive, especially on mud terrains, because while mud terrains are exceptional in the dirt, they are mud and snow rated, but that means they're just all seasons and not really snow rated or you know three-peak rated. Uh, and I could see a 9,000 pound truck with only uh, two wheel rear drive and a virtual locker being a handful in a snowstorm. So it would be nice to have the comfort and security of all wheel drive. In other words, getting that front motor to actually power the front wheels. So maybe I'll pull uh, the battery, see if that fixes it, and then happily head on uh, home. But first I gotta get some breakfast. So that's where we're at. I don't think anything's broken per se. I just think that there's a software problem. Uh, and I think that uh, the system has decided that it's not gonna send power to either the front wheels and it's not gonna rotate all four wheels, four wheel steering, which I don't really care about on the road right now. So, yeah.
All right, so I just had uh, a lovely McMuffin for breakfast. Uh, and uh, I got an interesting email I want to share with you guys uh, from uh, my Hummer. OnStar notification, advanced diagnostic. This diagnostic alert is for your GMC Hummer EV. A critical issue with the electric drive unit in your 2022 GMC Hummer EV has been detected. Get out. Please service your vehicle immediately. And then it gives you the location of my dealership and where I should take it. Now, my question is, since I've been sitting here um, eating breakfast, has this thing fixed itself? So let me power it up. And let's see. You can join me in seeing if, any, if anything has fixed itself indeed. So I'll just power it up and let's see. <laughs> Look at that. No air for the four wheel steer, uh, no air for the four wheel drive system. So I do believe that the truck has fixed itself. <laughs> See, all ends well. <laughs> and it was a software glitch. Um, so I should have let it sit on the trail for a little bit longer. Actually, what I should have done is. Um, what I should have done is had a buddy with me. Shouldn't be out here alone. This is uh, this is kind of stupid on my part. All right, well, the truck has fixed itself. And like I said, this is a uh, great off-road truck as long as you keep it on road. <laughs> now I just gotta get home and uh, I feel much better about the snowstorm because now I have a truck that's, once again, all-wheel drive with uh, all-wheel steering and uh, time to head home. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you next time. Ciao.